I hear people say, well, when you get to my age, you figure this out. Or when you get a little bit older, you learn that life is about this. And every time I talk to somebody who says something like that, I think to myself, but do you have to be older? Welcome to the Go Hunt Life Show, hosted by Todd Nevins. This is Todd Nevins, and I explore stories about people that had seemingly normal lives and careers going, but they pulled the ripcord and blew up their comfort bubbles to hunt down their life that they had always dreamed of living. On the show today, I speak to Caleb James. One year ago, he was a TV news reporter in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was chasing the story in front of the camera and had a very public career. It was actually the job that he had always dreamed of. But the reality of the job was that the stories that he found himself exploring were really just him chasing down bad people, demanding that they tell him why they were so bad. And one day it occurred to him that his job was actually reliant upon horrible things happening in his community. That was his job security. So he decided to only chase the good stories. Problem with that is that that doesn't sell TV advertising. So he had to quit his job and leave everything behind that was safe and that everything that he had built to pursue a completely different path. He is now pulling an Airstream trailer across the U.S. in search of the good stories and under his brand, The Greatest of Us. He's stopping in a new city every week and creating a weekly documentary. And the stars are just normal people that he encounters along the way. One of those stars in one of his recent documentaries is Abraham Lincoln. My conversation with journalist, traveler, and storyteller Caleb James is coming up next. But first, a word from our sponsor, PrintDirtCheap.com. They have sponsored the Go Hunt Life podcast for over a year. Founder Jeff Chrisman, thank you very much. If you need anything printed, printed swag, done cheap and fast, go to PrintDirtCheap.com. So business cards, letterhead, event tickets, like club flyers, menus, anything printed, uh, go to PrintDirtCheap.com. If you don't believe me, go to their site, and there are 602 five-star reviews on there that explains exactly how good they are. If you don't believe 602 people, order their free sample pack. Click on that on the homepage, and they'll send you a few samples of exactly what they do and how good it is. Once you go back, use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. And if you want to know the story behind the company, I actually interviewed Jeff uh, back in July of 2017 on episode number 57. Check it out. And again, printed swag, use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. Caleb, thank you for jumping on the show today. You bet. Where are you located in the world? And if you were to walk outside, describe what you would see. Uh, I'm in Springfield, Illinois, and if I walked outside right now, I would see my neighbor's pop-up camper. (laughs) You've got to be kidding me, man. I grew up in Springfield, Illinois. No kidding. I grew up about five miles east of Rochester, Illinois. That is funny. I had no idea you were there. Yeah, yeah. That is... It's a... I really like it. I actually, I've been staying one week uh, in every place that I go, and I'm actually staying two weeks here because I I got a little tired, and I mean, we can get to that later. That's cool. All right. Well, how old are you? Are you married, and do you have kids? Uh, I'm 31, and no and no. But you have two travel companions. Yeah, I have two dogs. I, you know what? This might strike a nerve with some of your listeners. But I will not allow people to refer to my dogs as children. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's No, I don't think you're going to strike a nerve. I think that's logical. Some people, I mean, some people are all about, you know, like call, like referring to their dogs as kids. And it annoys, it annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. What is your profession and primary ways that you make money? Um, <laughs> that's a scary question. Uh, I'm a, I'm a videographer. Um, I mean, it's, I'm a storyteller. I, that kind of sounds like a, it's kind of like a holistic term for what I do. Um, but I used to be a reporter for a really long time and that's pretty much the only skill set that I possess. Um, 
professionally. So I, uh, I shoot video and I'm a photographer and I'm a writer. In terms of making money, um, I'm producing this web series and I'm trying to monetize it um, because that's really, you know, it's a product that I'm creating. I think it's more than a travel vlog. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, to monetize it with sponsors and, and through Patreon and some other ways. Well, take me back when you had a more relatable life. I guess you were a reporter, as you just said. Take me back a year ago when you had, I mean, being a reporter, you're, tip, you're not a nine to fiver, but you have a relatable and a, a safe and dependable salary and uh, you know, you, you've got a job. Take me back to that life. What were you doing and, and where were you living? Uh, I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I was a, what's called a night side TV reporter. So I was working at night from like two o'clock in the afternoon to whenever. Sometimes, uh, we would get out after the, the 10 o'clock news was over. And sometimes we would get out at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so it always depended on, you know, what kind of, uh, stuff was going on, what we were covering. Um, there's a lot of crime where I was where I was living, and it was a lot of like big, crazy, you know, crime scenes that would keep us out until you know sometimes two, three in the morning. Um, if it was if it was something really big, um, a lot of officer involved shootings. So no, I mean my my job was never like a nine to five situation i never had that kind of luxury but it sounds like there's a lot of there's a lot of adrenaline involved in a job like that it, it would seem am i wrong uh yeah yeah there is um it's not always i i think the healthiest kind of adrenaline what do you mean by that like i'm assuming then you're leading into the reason why you decided to pull the ripcord from that and follow your current path well i think when you're constantly um anticipating the next horrible thing that's going to happen in your community and that's what you are kind of reliant on for job security i i don't know it's it's kind of an odd feeling i think to to be chasing that stuff down all the time i think that the work that journalists do is in, extremely important it's the only thing I ever wanted to be was a, a journalist. And I still consider myself one. Um, I'm just doing a different kind of storytelling now. Um, but I think that the place that I got to was just kind of um, exhaustion. Like I was tired of just always anticipating what was going to be next. Um, and I, I can't say that I'll, I'll never not go back to it, you know? I mean, that would never be like a door that I would want to close um, because it was something that I really, really loved doing. It was a passion of mine. Um, it, it, it still is a passion of mine. Like some days I miss it. Um, but I think it's just, you know, constantly being on edge. Um, the way that I would always describe my job to people who you know, maybe didn't understand how the workflow worked was like, you know, when, wherever you work, you have like a big project usually that's, that's due, you know, in, in any sort of like uh, higher level profession, I think that you have to sort of like present something to your boss um, once in a while, you know, like every few weeks or something, uh, some sort of like progress report or some sort of project that you have due. And as a journalist, as a TV reporter, you have a project due every night <laughs> and you have like eight, six hours to work on it <laughs> and you have to like come up with the project, find the project and finish the project in six hours. And then you not only present it to your boss, but you present it to everybody who's watching TV. Um, it's a it's an incredibly challenging and really stressful job, especially when you're dealing with the kind of trauma that you're talking about. Um, and I think for me, it just got, you know, there are a lot of people who can disassociate from that and they can just kind of say, you know, well, this is my job and this is, you know, like, I'm not going to think about this stuff. I can't. 
I think about everything um, in, you know, colorful detail. And so I think after a while that got pretty exhausting. Was there one moment that you can think back and, and remember and think, you know what, I need to make a change in my life for myself? Um, it's difficult to pinpoint one moment because I had been thinking about it for a while and there were, there were a lot of, there were a lot of experiences that I was having, you know, out in the field reporting different stories. Um, and there were a lot of sort of experiences that I was having like culturally within the newsroom environment as well that I was like, you know, this is not, this is just not good for my head. There were so many different things that factored into it. It wasn't just like, oh, I hate, you know, talking about sad stuff. It was like, I kind of dislike the person that I'm becoming when I'm talking about sad stuff all the time. Um, and, you know, hand in hand with that, I had a lot of personal discovery going on at the same time. So I was, learning a lot of stuff about myself personally and the past that I had had and things that I went through as a kid that I didn't understand until I was an adult. And so realizing those things at the same time kind of led me to, to think, well, you specifically, maybe, maybe it's not that way for everyone, um, but you right now, in your life specifically now may not want to be putting yourself in this situation for your own health. You are now on an excursion of finding the good out of, out of people and out of people throughout the United States. And you're traveling and pulling a airstream and, uh, and living on the road and interviewing people along the way and creating these unbelievably beautiful, incredibly edited, great storytelling videos and publishing them each week. But when did the thought occur to you that this is the path that I want to follow? And who did you tell first? And did they tell you you were crazy? <laughs> I had a day at work um, where I was just really frustrated in a lot of ways. I was frustrated you know, about the way that I was feeling. Um, and I was frustrated about feeling a little bit limited in terms of like creativity um, and, and a lot of different things that day. And um, I remember I talked to um, my friend, Tessa, who is um, the main anchor at my station. Um, and Tessa had always been somebody who she's we're the same age. We're almost exactly the same age. Um, but she has always been this, this person who I consider to be very wise for some reason, you know, she always had like a way of uh, talking about things that I really appreciated. And that really helped me sort of, you know, come to my own conclusions about stuff, but she was always a really good advice giver. And, I had expressed to her some of this frustration that day. And she said, you know, it, it was really incredible the way she put it. And I, I'll never be able to do it justice. But she said, um, she just said, you know, you're so, you're so young. And I think after, after everything I had been through as a child um, in a really unstable environment, and after working this very stressful job for so many years, I, I really didn't feel very young. And I kind of felt, like I said, I mean, I've used the word so many times, I felt exhausted. And for her to tell me, Caleb, you're still really young. And you can go do whatever you want to do. And you have the skills to make whatever you tackle successful, like you can do it. And if you are at all questioning whether you're supposed to be here, if you're sad, remember that you're young and that you can go 
make something that you want to make if you want. And so I guess this answers your earlier question. That's when I made the decision. I literally made the decision to leave in that moment. Um, and the idea to buy an Airstream and to drive around the country and make this series came over the next five hours. Oh like I, I came up with it. Yeah. And then, so it was like a couple of days later, I actually went back to Tessa and told her what I was going to do. And she was really thrilled. I only t- I told Tessa and I told um, my photographer that I work with on a daily basis, uh, Dennis. I told those two. Um, and they were really the only people who knew until I actually quit and did it, which t- it took me like three and a half months to plan. Um, but they, I, I pretty much did everything in a vacuum. I mean, I, I came up with the decision to do it. I came up with the, the idea and then I told, you know, just a handful of people and then I just did it. And you registered the URL and you titled it the greatest of capital U capital S, but also it's read the greatest of us, both the greatest of the United States and the greatest of us. How did you come up with that and why? So my, my show is not political, which is important. It's important to me that people know that because I'm, I think that we are like inundated with political conversation (laughs) and it's not something that I wanted to like get into um, or talk about really because it's exhausting. I think there's that word again. (laughs) Um, But I think that there's been a great deal of discussion about uh, how great we need to make ourselves as a country. And I, I can't help but believe that as individuals, like everybody has greatness in them. I, and, you know, it's, it's something that I have to learn about myself um, and that I've had to kind of uh, really encourage myself through is to say like, you know, dude, like no matter what happened or what, what kind of hurdles you have to get over that, that weren't your fault. um, You're great. Like you have some, you, you have great stuff in you you have great abilities in you you have you have some some greatness in you and i think that um one thing that i think i started getting frustrated with over time was like you know if you compliment yourself for a job well done or if you acknowledge that you're good at something uh i think that our society kind of says like oh you're arrogant you know, stop being so arrogant, stop being so full of yourself. And then I think a lot of creative, talented people end up shutting themselves up um, because of that sort of response. And I, I think that I came up with the, the, the name because, you know, I think individually we are all great, <laughs> like no matter what, I don't know, no matter what has messed us up in the past or what has made us think one way or the other or, um, you know, be be angry or happy or sad or whatever we happen to be. I think that like somewhere in us, we have we have great stuff going on and we can offer each other advice, even if maybe we don't always take it ourselves or we're we we don't have our own lives together completely um we can we can kind of help each other out with our own perspective and i that's where i was coming from i think that it's important to acknowledge how like diverse and cool our patterns of thought are and that makes us great you've been out on the road now for just th- uh, four months three or four months roughly and um you started with this thought in mind obviously and you planned it out and you launched out on the road from albuquerque now we're talking from springfield illinois 
has your why, like why is this important for you to uncover these stories? Has your why changed over the last few months since you're now out living what you had planned? Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Um, living in this trailer by myself, um, is like incredibly isolating and it has taught me more about myself as a human being than I thought I would ever know. And honestly, keeping up with the series and, and doing what I planned to do from the beginning has been an incredible, I'm not I, like, I'm not going to pretend. Um, it has been an incredible challenge to keep going um, because my understanding of myself as a human being is so rapidly evolving that this place that I came from at the beginning of being like, you know, oh, I can be this like authoritative storyteller who comes in and like finds these people and teaches everybody else about, you know, how to like take advice and how to how to live, you know, I, I realized that like, I'm a nobody and I need to hear from all these people just as much as anybody else does. And it's really been, I, I mean, if at the end of the day, like nobody watches the series anymore and nobody cares about it anymore. And I just like lose all my viewers and I'm like, I'm completely irrelevant. I, this was still like such a worthwhile experience for me because I have just, I feel like I've completely changed as a person and I'm still, ch I mean, it not only have I changed in a, in a positive way, but it has revealed things about me that I realize I was like brushing under the bed. You know, I was like sweeping under the rug um, because I didn't have to be honest with myself about those things, um, because I had so much going on, you know, I had my, I had my job going on and I had all this other stuff going on. Now it's just me hanging out with me in a tiny trailer. So I can't really ignore those things about myself anymore. And I have to face them. And I think that's another thing that the series is kind of becoming is that we have to, we just have to be real with ourselves about who we are and what our experiences have been and how they've shaped us and how that contributes to how we look at the world and how we make our decisions. And then we have to ask ourselves if we're, if, if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Click Placement, a digital agency designing Google AdWords and pay-per-click marketing strategies for startups, small businesses, and even people building a side hustle. Hit up clickplacement.com to start a conversation. If you would like to personally support the Go Hunt Life podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash go hunt life to make a donation. Your videos are incredibly well done, as I said earlier, but really, I think what makes them is that they're vulnerable and transparent as far as who you are and how you are, you are, um, portraying people and, and interviewing people and, and sharing their stories. You're doing them with incredible care and respect. And that, that definitely comes out. And that's not easy because you're talking to people that, that have gone through some pretty traumatic things, but on the other side of it, they're explaining their stories as to why it's, it's important to keep going and, and why they are great. As you, as you said earlier, is there, is there one conversation or one moment along the way so far that you think about more than anything else? And you think that has shaped the reason why you're doing this? Um, no, not one. <laughs> I, I, and I only say that because I think every conversation that I have makes me want to have another conversation. I don't know if that makes sense. So it, 
there, there's really, there's really not one that, that sticks out to me and says like, this was the most important thing that you learned because I feel like it's all really important. Um, and every, every episode of the series, you know, I kind of try to focus on a different topic or a different um, sort of concept or idea or something that, that people tend to struggle with internally, I think. Um, and, you know, the, the other day I did a, an episode on success, like what is success? And, you know, the, the vast majority of people who you ask, um, what, you know, what do you think is success? You know, what does success mean to you? I think people, you know, when, when, when we answer a question like that, I think that we, we answer it in our head really quickly first. And I think we know what people want to hear, um, as an answer to that question. I think we know that people want to hear, you know, oh, it's my family. It's the people who love me. It's the, you know, it's the, it's being happy, you know. And because nobody wants to talk to somebody who says like, well, it's making a lot of money. You know, <laughs> that's what, I mean, that like you just know that that's not an appropriate answer to that question. But what I really enjoyed about that episode, um, which was in St. Louis, uh, and it's episode 10, it's the last one. Um, but what I really enjoyed about that episode was, you know, once you start to talk to people and, and press them a little more and get a little deeper with them, it, it becomes, everything is about us. You know, every everything that we feel is about who we are inside and what started to come out in that episode was that like, you know, success is like being okay with yourself. Like you can't be happy with other people. You can't be content with your family. You can't appreciate your friends or, you know, the things that make you smile or that make you happy or that give you peace without being cool with yourself first. And that is a lot more difficult than it seems. And I think a lot more people believe that they've achieved it when they haven't yet. Because being okay with yourself really requires, I think, a lot of introspection and like demands of yourself. I mean, you have to really just like sit with yourself and and ask yourself whether you're doing things the right way and whether you're, you know, really setting yourself up for long-term success, the way that you are behaving as a person. Um, and that takes a lot of time. Um, and I think that if you're conscious of it, that there's not, there's not one person who made a huge impression on me, but there is a constant theme that comes up. Um, that has made a profound impression on me um, that has really stuck with me. And that is how often I hear people say, well, when you get to my age, you figure this out. Or when you get a little bit older, you learn that, you know, life is about this. And every time I talk to somebody who says something like that, I think to myself, but do you have to be older you know, do you have to get, do, do you have to be old and with 10 or 15 or 20 years left to figure this stuff out? I mean, it, it's great that ever, that, that they're figuring it out. Um, no matter how old anybody, I mean, I, I love talking to, uh, to everybody who's like coming to these realizations about yourself and it's never too late. You're never too old to do it. But are you ever too young to do it? I don't think so. And I, I think that's that's the thing that keeps making an impression on me is like, you know, people have said, you know, you're figuring this stuff out so early. And to me, it doesn't feel early. I'm, I'm 31 years old. It doesn't, that doesn't feel early to me. 
And I think that if more people started to think that, that it's never too early to, to question yourself and to learn about yourself, then maybe we would all be treating each other a little better because we would understand ourselves better. Well, that message is definitely striking a chord. It's obvious when you are reading, when you read the comments on your videos, on your Facebook posts um, from strangers. And, and the reason you and I are talking is because a previous guest of mine, Anna and Derek Morris, um, brought you up to me and said, you've got to check this guy out. This guy is, is doing something really cool. And you inspired them. They pulled the ripcord a few years ago and traveled the world and then came back. And I talked to them when they were in Mexico and they really weren't sure what they were going to do next. And about six weeks go by and they said, you know what, you got to check out Caleb. He's doing something really cool and we're going to follow his path. And they moved back to Texas and they bought a truck and a trailer and they are days from getting getting on the road and, and following you, I mean, following your journey and your story and, and, uh, and, and shaping their own. How does that feel when you hear from total strangers that you've made an impact on them? I think that's really awesome. Um, you know, I, this is something that, um, that actually came up two episodes ago in episode nine. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it's not something that I was conscious of or, or really understood before. Um, but I kind of came to the, to the realization as I was making this episode and, you know, I, I, I had a, a rough life and as I, as I got older, I would give an incredible amount of credit to people who were just kind of like nice to me, you know? And so if somebody was, if somebody was nice to me, I would, you know, I would just canonize this person. I mean, I thought that they were just like a saint for being nice to me because I had been treated very unnicely. Um, by people were, who were supposed to treat me treat me well um, as a kid, and so I promise this as a point. Um, I I think that you know it is great to be inspired by other people, and it's great to acknowledge that you're inspired by other people. And I think it's really cool that like I inspired them to to do to do this. That's really neat. But whatever you do in life, I think it's really important for our for our self worth and for our self esteem to acknowledge that, like, you know, no matter how many people inspired you or how many people supported you or how many people smiled at you and told you that you were doing a good job, you know, they they all went home and went to bed that day, um, and they they weren't thinking about you and you had to do all the hard work, you know, whatever you do, whatever you decide to do, um, no matter how much support you got, you did it. And I think that that's something that, that is such a small thing to remind yourself of, but it's, it's hugely encouraging. I think once you start to, really just accept and realize that. And it's another thing that I think people get, kind of shamed for acknowledging, you know, that, that you've like been successful or done something on your own. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to say is it, it's great to inspire people. Um, but if something as small as me doing this little project and, and going on the road inspires someone, then they had the inspiration inside them the whole time. You know, it wasn't me. It was them. They just needed a little bit of, and it's it's just like talking with my friend Tessa, you know? I mean, it, if I didn't already want to leave <laughs> somewhere in me, you know, she, I, I, I think she, she recognized that about me and she, she understood that I needed some encouragement. And so she gave me the encouragement and that unlocked 
the part of me that just accepted that that's what I wanted to do. And then I did it. Um, and I give her the credit that she deserves for, for speaking up and telling me that I should consider it. But I don't credit Tessa with this project. You know, I don't credit Tessa with, with my new life or what I've decided to do. You know, I did the work. And it wasn't always like that. You know, I tried to, I, I would, I kept saying, Tessa, you know, you did this. You, you gave me the strength to do this. And she was the one who had to put it into perspective for me and say like, no idiot, like you did it. Like you're, I, I gave you a little push and I'm glad it helped, but you did all of this. And that was a huge thing for me to, to learn was that, you know, we can appreciate other people, but it's all on you. If you could walk back or if you could go back in time and you're walking away from that initial conversation with Tessa, where she kind of gave you permission, so to speak, and give yourself one minute of advice, knowing what you know now, what would you tell yourself? Don't do it. No, just kidding. Um, I would, I would tell myself, um, you need to be more organized <laughs> than you are right now. Um, I, I think that I really was so eager to do it once I got that, like you said, permission. And that's funny because that's a word I've used many times for, for that conversation is that it was kind of like she gave me permission. Um, but I, I was so anxious and eager to jump into it. Um, that, and, and like I said, I mean, I came, I came up with the idea, you know, like with the remainder of the day, like I literally had come up with everything I wanted to do by the time I went to sleep that night. If I did sleep that night, I don't think I did. I think I was so excited. Um, but I think I would tell myself to slow down. Um, because, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to kind of like find my footing, uh, two and a half months into the project instead of before I left. Um, and that's definitely something that I would advise myself against. Is there one big thing or one big part of the planning that you wish you would have done? It would, should you have waited one month or six months and then you can talk yourself into waiting a year. You can wait your two years. Like when would have been the perfect time? Because I've argued that there wouldn't have been one. Oh no. I think, um, I think just like a little, maybe a little more. Well, yeah, I mean, you're right. I, I think that sometimes I frustrate myself because I don't have a lot of, uh, direction, um, in some of, some of my production, um, and how I'm writing these episodes. But then at the end of the day, that's kind of why it's good. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 can't, I can't really answer your question. Coming from the startup world in, in Austin, and, um, and this is, I'm going to butcher this quote from, from Mark Zuckerberg, but his, his quote is, if you come to market with a product and you're not embarrassed by it, you've come too late. <laughs> and so it's the same in the startup world. It's the same with me launching my very first podcast. If you're not embarrassed by your first episode, you waited too long. I love that. Yeah. And that, that line from Zuckerberg has stuck with me. And I heard it so many times when I was in the middle of the startup world in Austin. So there is no perfect time. And if you're not nervous and embarrassed, getting started, then, then you've overplanned and waited too long. So in now walk me down. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay. So, um, I want to say a year, but let's say six months from now, what is the perfect scenario for you in six months? Um, in, in six months, I hope, you know, I have like 30,000 subscribers and that I'm still going strong and that I'm on the, west coast or the it's the deep south or somewhere along my journey and that i've already you know that i've just kept improving and and kept telling really cool stories 
Um, the other goal that I have for this channel is really to like build a really interactive community with subscribers. Um, and I, I've started, I mean, it's a very, very, very new um, sort of concept that I'm putting into, into play, but I've started a Patreon page um, and subscribers can contribute to the project because they have to make a living or else it's not going to happen anymore, um, which is just, I mean, that's just the reality of it. Somebody... When I when I introduced this concept of me <laughs> launching a Patreon page, um, somebody, uh, you know, I had said, you know, like if I if I don't start making a living here, you know, this I'm just gonna have to kind of shutter shutter the blinds. Like I'm gonna have to not. I I have to go find a, another job. And um, somebody had commented, uh, you know. Um, Oh, he's going to threaten us with taking it away. Um, and I, and I, uh, and I thought like, well, that's really cool because for it to be considered a threat for me to take it away is pretty cool, uh, in itself. And then also like, you know, it's just like, it's, it's a very simple concept that like, I have to, I have to fund it in some way. Like it's not. It's I'm bleeding money making it right now on my own. So uh, luckily, I have had quite a bit of Patreon support right off the off the bat, just launching it. Um, I have almost I, I I think somewhere in the ballpark of seventy patrons already, and I I launched it um, just a couple of days ago. But my larger goal. Uh, there is to just encourage more involvement with my subscribers. So the reward levels on my Patreon have to do with um, involvement in making the show. So um, I'll do like a monthly uh, live chat with my patrons um, where we'll just brainstorm ideas for future episodes. Um, topics and questions that they want to have answered or, or touched on. Um, and there's a, there's a Patreon support level on my page that I didn't think anybody would pledge for because uh, it's $30 a month, but I have like five $30 subscribers who, uh, who will get to video chat with me and actually like interview me. And then that becomes the episode. Um, so just kind of like turning things around a little bit. And uh, having a a discussion in the in the opposite direction, um, so I guess people are interested in that. <laughs> At least five people. That's gonna um, feel pretty good. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I I think that my goal has been and always will be for as long as I can do this to just like talk to people, to have a discussion with people because. My theory is, and I think it's constantly proven, um, like this is not a particularly new concept, but like if you have a discussion with someone, um, it doesn't matter how like weird you thought they were or how mean you thought they looked or, or anything. Once you talk to them, if they if you can relate to them on any level, then like you've just made a friend, you know, and you've, you've learned something about this person and you've learned something about yourself at the same time. And I, I think that's, I, I literally think that's the key to us being better to each other. And I, I think that we don't take enough time to do it we don't take enough time to like smile at each other or talk to each other. So I figured maybe I can facilitate that. So that's really what my larger goal is about. It's not just about me finding these people who are super duper and like interviewing them and getting their insights. Um, it's, it's about involving everybody and just showing that like really everybody, no matter who they are, is really you just like give them a chance to show you that they're interesting.
That comes across loud and clear in all these videos. And you can find, we have to end on that. You can find Caleb at thegreatestofus.com and on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at The Greatest of Us, and definitely on Patreon. All right, Caleb, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Don't forget to hit up the online printing rock stars at printdirtcheap.com and use promo code LIFEHUNTER for $10 off. Hey, Life Hunters, thank you for listening to this episode of Go Hunt Life. If you like the show and would like to support it, go to iTunes and do this. Subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and review it. It helps, and thank you. If you or someone that you know has quit their normal life to follow their dreams, I would love an introduction and maybe interview them on the show. You can find me at GoHuntLife.com and also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at GoHuntLife. Until next time, stay weird, dare greatly, and ripcord out.